Terry is a very well-behaved robot. Right, can Terry hear? Is responding to a sound hearing? Is it enough? I'm Berry Billingsley and I'm now a professor in science education. Many questions in life are big questions that stretch across subjects. What's missing from children's education is a chance to encounter those big questions. But creating the space to make it happen in a schoolroom is incredibly difficult. One of the ironies about science education in schools around the world is that it claims it's all about unlocking the secrets of nature, but most students, rather sadly, by the time they've gone through their secondary science education, have lost a lot of that initial curiosity which younger students have. Religious education in this country for many years has, has not really been supporting our children and young people to understand the rich and complex and somewhat messy lived reality of religious and non-religious worldviews. If we're to equip young people to be active citizens and to have an informed approach to the world, we have to equip them to ask the big questions. Religious education in England and in the UK is quite diverse. It is locally determined and locally organised. The Templeton project was to try and help teachers in those areas where there's little support to uh, have a richer and a deeper engagement with religions. We work with teachers a lot and what they tend to do is produce what you might call textbook presentations of religion, uh, sort of idealised versions of religion as if there's one Islam or one Judaism. But we're opening this up to explore uh, a real range and diversity. So the study of Christianity, for example, might really have been focusing on those people who are believing and belonging and behaving in, in orthodox mainstream ways. Whereas we know from the data that many people who identify as Christians don't often practice, they don't often pray or go to church or read the Bible. We would understand a worldview to be the beliefs, the convictions, the values that shape your way of understanding the world, but also the way in which you actually live your embodied life in the world. Everyone has a worldview, whether religious or not. Each individual sees the world through a certain lens. It may be shaped by your upbringing, surroundings or religion. For many people, they don't relate to traditional religious understandings of the world. They have an ethical framework, they have beliefs and traditions that are important to them, so you're including everybody in the conversation. So it actually draws non-religious worldviews in as a focus of study, to saying, well, what about you? And then if this is your non-religious worldview, what are the influences on it? Today we're going to be looking at um, what, what makes us human. The questions are at the centre. We talk about an inquiry-led approach. So questions are a starting point. What do I believe? Why do I believe it? As a human we all have emotions and I think that we can't be human without emotions. There's a temptation for teachers to try and cram as much in as possible. This is really about how much understanding can there be? How much can we really equip them to answer the big questions in life? One of the problems we have is that we don't always give the bigger picture. So the good thing about the Big Questions in Classrooms initiative is that it was meant to help teachers and students think 
why are we doing this? What's it really all about? Rather than just focusing on the minutiae. It's a multidisciplinary approach. We use philosophical approaches, we use theolo theological approaches, and we articulate those as distinct approaches now. Like, what does it mean to be human? Like, for example, psychology is like how the brains have changed over time and how, like, you know, neurology, like, brings us into natural sciences. It allows for people to be a little bit more scholarly in their approaches rather than to, than to feel that they're just being uh, fed some information and being told, here's the stuff you need to know. Um, from the past and our ancestors, they're what they learn has affected us. We still have a model of education that derives from the mid-19th century in Western Europe, where there is an expert teacher at the front who pretty much talks, demonstrates, students pay attention, write down, learn. That is remarkably true still. We are definitely at a time where the model of a good teacher and a good student is changing and needs to change. I think the best teaching combines different approaches to teaching, such as dialogic teaching. And what that means is the teacher facilitates uh, proper constructive dialogue with the children and the children with each other. Uh, so working in small groups, the teacher has to stand back. Dialogic teaching enables children to have a view. As long as it's reasoned, it focuses much less on the right and wrong. It enables children to, to look at questions which actually are more interesting, the why sorts of questions. Children, they really respond to this, that their views are taken into account, but also that they're able to change their minds, uh, change other people's minds within the class. In the West, one of the disappointing things in the last few decades is that young people have less and less choice in terms of which subjects they do. And one of the things about the Big Questions in Classrooms initiative is that it just tried slightly to shift the dial a bit to give young people a little bit more opportunity to have some choice and agency. They decide how they learn about a topic within each classroom. I think that it gives student agency because they're able to both ask the questions and recognise that there may be different answers and they're able to explore why people might answer in different ways. One of the rather nice consequences of some of the Be Quick projects is it's allowed both teachers and students to feel a bit more comfortable about acknowledging they don't know. I may be a reasonably experienced good science teacher, but if I'm trying to include little bits from religious education or design and technology, it's not very threatening for me to cheerfully say, I don't know, in answer to a student's question. These resources went out to over three and a half thousand teachers. Some teachers suggest that it's refreshed their RE or their religious education. They found the process of exploring it really fruitful for them to think about their own professional practice, but also to help pupils to really engage with the, the subject to recognise that their own worldviews have an impact on how they encounter materials. One of the big impacts that happened very quickly was that we had children and young people coming to the teachers and saying, oh, I see me. I've never seen me before in the classroom and that's making them feel valued. And as a result, they are more interested, they are asking more questions. If students feel that their views are valuable and that they have something to bring to the classroom, that's a fundamental stepping stone in building engaged young people who will be able to carry on and use that in whatever they go on to do. They will flourish.